share my screen. Now we're going to talk about the imperfect. So I'm using the example I used before, but this time I'm going to emphasize the meaning in the imperfect versus emphasizing the meaning in the preterito or the preterite. So in English, they would both be translated as I loved you, I did love you, I used to love you, okay? But the translations are inadequate. And I think, I like this, it says, cannot be translated from this, this expression, in a sense, this expression cannot be translated from English into Spanish because Spanish reflects a reality which does not exist in English. And there are a lot of parts of a language that exist in one part of a, that exists in one language, a reality that exists in one language, but does not exist in another. For example, when you do gender in Spanish and English, they're totally different, but not in French and Spanish. Because both French and Spanish have masculine, feminine, and masculine plural and feminine plural, right? In English, that reality doesn't exist. So when I see something, I don't think gender versus somewhere in the subconscious or maybe even the conscious mind, someone who speaks a language like Portuguese or Spanish or French, and I don't know what other languages, I think German, they think, they think feminine, masculine, and they also think neuter, they see gender. And for them, gender is not just male, female. It's also, it, go, it goes beyond that. So it's the same thing as where a verb tense exists in one language, when another language, it exists, but it's not so obvious and it's not so direct. There is a great difference between, and I've said this before, between tequise versus tequeria. Tequeria emphasizes the feeling, whether it, ex whether it still exists or not, it's not clear, nor is it relevant. What is important is the feeling that one once had. So if I say, yo tequeria, I'm telling you that I really loved you. I'm not emphasizing the fact that I don't love you anymore. I'm emphasizing the fact that you were part of me. You were my heart, you were my soul. Versus Tequise, on the other hand, emphasizes the fact that I loved you. Oh yeah, I loved you, but honey, it's over, it's dead, it's gone. It emphasizes that the feeling is firmly and unequivocally, can't, didn't say that word very well, unequivocally part of the past. And I don't know if we do that so consciously in English as you do it con so consciously in Spanish. If I say, I used to love you, and I did love you, and I loved you. Do I think that one means more the feeling versus the time? I don't know. I know in Spanish it's very clear because I even have a tense. Oh, by the way, just letting you know this, that the verb querer which means to want or to love is irregular in the preterito in the preterite tense, but it's not irregular in the imperfect. And later on, I'm, we're going to, I have a whole set of cards in Spanish. And when you follow the rule for verb tenses and when a verb tense is, and when a verb uh, is irregular when it doesn't follow that rule, okay? So the verb querer is regular, it's irregular in the preterite and regular in the uh, 
Imperfect. And imperfect is quería, querías, quería, queríamos, querían. And that ia, ias, ia, íamos, ia, íamos, íamos. And ian, that's the verb ending for the imperfect. So it follows the rule, remove the um, er and then add the ia, the ias, the ia, the íamos, and the ian. But in the preterite, it's irregular. Quise, uh, quisiste, quiso, quisimos, quisieron. The reason I'm having problems, because I don't use the uh, preterite that much in the, um, with querer. So I had to think about it for about a second or two. Okay, and by the way, um, where I have here, take care, take care, take care, it's take care, a mistake. Thank you. I think I showed you these cards before any other, but with the emphasis on the preterite versus the imperfect, here I'm putting the emphasis on the imperfect versus the preterite. Okay. The preterite, and now here it is. The preterite emphasizes or focuses on action and time. But time is very important, time. The focus is on when the action happened and how many times while in the imperfect, the focus is on the action itself the description. So the difference between te casaron means they got married and up during a particular time in the past and it specified they got married last year, they got married because remember it can be implied rather than actually uh, stated, okay? They got married and they're married. All right, estaban casados means they were married, but I don't know if they're still married, number one, and you and it's a description because the emphasis on the action of marriage. Background description is expressed in the imperfect. In English, it's expressed in the past. When you read a story, a lot of times it's in the past and the preterite past. Okay. Hacia una mañana, hacia una mañana estupenda. It was a beautiful morning. Hacia, once again, is no, not once again, because I haven't even looked at this verb before. This is the verb hacer. The verb hacer is regular in, it's irregular in the preterite, but it's regular in the imperfect. A lot of tenses, a lot of verbs that are irregular in the past, in the preterite, in the preterite, are regular in the imperfect. The verb I said is an example. The verb I said in the preterito or in the preterite is hice, hiciste, hizo, hicimos, hicieron. That's totally irregular. It's, it, it's not, it doesn't even have the same um, stem of H-A-C. -A the stem changes to H-I-C. Hice, Hiciste, hizo, hicimos, hicieron. Where in the imperfect is totally regular. Hacia, hacias, hacia, hacíamos, hacía. Llover is, you, yeah, it's irregular. That's the, that's the verb to rain. It's irregular in the preterite but it's regular in the imperfect. Llovia mucho, and there's different ways to say it was, that's like, it was raining a lot. It was raining a lot. The emphasis on the fact, is it still raining a lot? I don't know. 
but it was raining a lot. Llovia mucho, llovia a cantaros, means it was raining cats and dogs. El cielo despejaba. Now, here it is, because you're saying, where's that ia that you told me about? For the er verbs and the ir verbs, right? The ending for the imperfect is ia, ias, ia, 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 iamos, i, i, iamos, iamos, I'm just doing the ending here, iamos, ian. For the ar verb, despejar, had, ar, the ending is totally different. It's aba, abas, aba, a, abamos, ababamos, ababamos, oof, and aban. Right? So it's ablaba, ablabas, ablaba, ablabamos, ablaban. So you have two entirely different endings in the imperfect. The AR verb, the ABBA, ABBAS, ABBA, ABAMOS, ABLABAMOS, ABAMOS, ABLAN, versus the ER, IR, IA, IAS, IA, COMIAMOS. Iamos, Iamos. It's hard to put that accent when I don't have anything. They're like comiamos, Iamos. There it is, Iamos, Ian. So you have to, this is where Spanish can get difficult. You have a lot of endings you have to memorize. Okay. So remember, the imperfect emphasizes one aspect of the, the, the past that in English, you don't. Where the preterite emphasizes what we normally call the preterite, the past. You know, I talked, I walked. Okay. Okay, I'm going to come back with the verbs said and estar because they are a little bit different in both tenses. They are a little bit different. Because sometimes what, I'm, what we talk about, what I said about the imperfect versus the preterito, sometimes there are verbs that fall outside of that rule. So this is Corrala Ficklin McLean. Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E. And we have other websites. Repeat, R-E-P-E-E-T. I know that's not how you spell repeat, but that was taken, obviously. So we had to play with the spelling. Okay, repeat.com, R-E-P-E-E-T. So I want to thank you for coming to my channel or to my platform. I don't know how you're seeing this, but how it is. Think about subscribing. The more subscriptions I get, the more I, I get out there, right? And not just be a website that, that, has, that doesn't have a lot of people, maybe more and more and more and more to a million. Okay, thank you. Varala Ficklin McLean, welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E. Stop sharing. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.